Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me. In these series of videos, I like to show you about configurations, design tables, and equations. These are just introductions. I'm going to give you an opportunity to see what uh, I put together here in a very simple model. And then we'll go, go from there. We'll go from uh, configurations to derived configurations. Eventually, design tables will help us uh, automate that even further. And eventually, to equations. And all these things are, are related. And if there's one way to put all these things together and uh, you know label all these elements that we're going to be exploring today, is that these are just basic uh, automation tools that you will find uh, to be very helpful when putting together your SolidWorks uh, models. So configurations, uh, if you can think about it one, in one way, it's like one part with many different subparts to it. There are going to be uh, maybe uh, dimensions that we can change, like if you have a part that's similar to another part, instead of uh, going through and uh, making you know, a bunch of different parts that are very similar to each other. You can make like one part and that can have a configuration that have all those subparts uh, associated with it. And a very good illustration of this is uh, like this length that I created here. This length uh, could be uh, anywhere from about three inches, two inches on up, and uh, the holes could be driven by an equation, which they are. Uh, the, the length of the rod could be driven by uh, a design table and, uh, you know, initially by a configuration. So, if you think about design tables, design tables kind of drive configurations. And equations uh, also, as an automation tool, uh, help drive the model all together. So, uh, if you think about a design table, just to clarify that a little bit, it's uh, related to configurations. Uh, design tables drive configurations. But in these series of videos, we are going to start with configurations, move to design tables, and it's just kind of an extra and a side. We're going to uh, show you how to do equations. But if you have a part like what we're looking at here with the link, uh, it could be a, 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 you know, a certain length or a variety of lengths. So you have to make a, a, a number of different uh, lengths with a, uh, you know, with a certain uh, specific length to it and you know, a certain amount of holes to it. Instead of creating, like I mentioned before, a number of different parts to uh, do something like that with, you can create one part with some very basic dimensions to it, and then uh, derive it by uh, configurations. So some things that you might uh, consider with a, a configuration are, are going to be some dimensions aren't going to change, like perhaps the thickness of our of our length. So if we're to click on that, the thickness of the, of the length right now is a quarter of an inch. That doesn't change from part to part. Why not use that in one single part? and draw the rest of the elements in here by, um, you know, by configurations, by different configurations. So let's take a little test drive here and take a look at this. Um, what we have here is a, is a nine hole uh, link, and all these are driven by configurations. So if you go to your configuration manager, of course you know that you have your uh, feature manager, you have your properties manager, configuration manager, and then uh, um, dimension expert manager, and then your display manager. But well, we're going to concentrate just on these two tabs, uh, the part manager, or the feature manager, I should say, sorry about that, and our configuration manager. So this is a well-refined part. These are a lot of configurations, and uh, we'll go through this with a little more detail as our videos continue. But all the configurations that are driven by a design table have an X by them. And X is a good way to think about that as being Excel driven. Uh, so we have a, a three lever or uh, three hole no lever uh, configuration which isn't driven by the design table and most of the other ones are so the way we're going to start our example is we're going to go ahead and create a very simple model and then uh, put some uh, configurations in there for that model and then create a design table it's going to take some of the elements of that configuration and put it into the Excel spreadsheet and then we can make manipulations of that Excel spreadsheet from there so that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea there. We have a, a 3 inch, a 5 inch, a 13 inch, one with a, a knob or a lever, others that don't have it. Some of these are going to be derived configurations, some of them are going to be regular configurations. But uh, we'll get into that here in just a little bit. And uh, eventually we're going to get to equations. So equations are uh, up here in your equation folder when you insert an equation into your part. It's going to appear there in your equation folder. And just to uh, show you what that looks like, you have global variables, you have a feature that's going to be driven by that equation, and you have it in an equation down here. So what I'm doing with this equation down here, is I'm going to take the dimension of the whole pattern and make that equal to uh, my dimension 2. So this is going to be dimension 1 of the whole pattern. This is going to give me uh, the certain amount of holes that are going to be there. And then, uh, which is going to drive dimension 2 plus 1. So we're going to take out how many holes we're going to have, which is going to be this one if we do a 13 inch, 
uh, it's going to evaluate to 13 inch, but it's a 12 inch between the first hole and the last hole. We're going to add one to that and make that whole bar 13 inches long is the way that evaluates too. So we're going to cover that a little bit later when we get into further videos. But that kind of gives you an introduction of what we're looking at here. And we'll look at the base sketch too and kind of show you how that was put together. We know it's a quarter inch wide. But uh, we are going to start our sketch with the origin right here at the hole. Now typically I like to uh, start my parts with the origin right in the middle of the part and try to try to maintain that symmetry. But we're going to maintain most of the symmetry. Uh, the two of the three planes are going to be right down the middle of the part. Where we have the top plane and uh, the front plane right down the middle of the part. It's just going to be the right plane. It's going to be right over here where the hole is. And that way we could do a hole pattern across the whole length of here and not have to go into a second direction which complicates things quite a bit. So one bit of advice here when you're putting it together your part, you want to think about how your part's going to be ultimately and try to reduce the steps involved in regard to creating that part because it's going to make it a lot easier to manage that part initially and make uh, edits to it later. It also makes the part a little bit smaller too when it comes to saving it and putting it in, in, into assemblies. So, like I said, we're going to start with the configurations. We uh, go into inserting a design table which is driven by Excel and drives those configurations and ultimately all this stuff uh, automates the features and the thing about the design table is it allows you to do two things it allows you to turn on and off features or uh, sketches and other elements it either suppresses them or unsuppresses them uh, per that configuration or it allows you to change uh, dimensions you can configure a dimension by right clicking on that dimension and specifying a specific configuration of what that dimension uh, length is going to be and uh, conver uh, concurrent with uh, design tables are, are the configurations that are in the background of that. The design tables again drive the configurations, not to be too redundant here. But um, uh, equations ultimately are kind of like a side here. Do they, uh, equations could be used if you have some dimension that's related to another dimension, maybe proportionally, you could devise uh, some sort of equation to go ahead and drive that. So all three of those elements, configurations, design tables, and equations, we're going to be covering in the next few videos that we go through.